As a young girl, my family would attend the McNabb family clan reunion every summer to celebrate our Scottish heritage. We would sing a song about the founder of the McNabb clan, Duncan McNabb, in a song to the tune of Auld Lang Syne. Duncan, oh Duncan, oh what a man was he. When I asked my grandfather about Duncan, his eyes became soft and his voice tender. That man knew that land was not a home, he said. It was a gut feeling that this is where you belong. And Duncan would not stop until he found a place that sang the song of Scotland. Duncan McNabb was born on a sunny day near Killen, Scotland, to Mr. and Mrs. Finley McNabb on April 18, 1837. Duncan had another brother, Hugh. His family engaged in raising sheep in the highlands on which their farm was located. Sheep herding was hard work, with little reward, and Duncan's parents wanted more for their two sons. In 1845, Duncan's parents sold their property and took their family to Glasgow to earn factory wages and save for passage to the United States. Duncan was 11 years old in 1848, when the family boarded a boat with their belongings and along with many other families, set sail to new lands and opportunity. The journey was long and arduous. The ship encountered many storms and smallpox broke out among the passengers. Many people, including Duncan's mother and brother Hugh, died. Duncan and his father were devastated but had to continue on. For some time, their ship was quarantined on the island of Newfoundland. After the disease was cured, the ship resumed its voyage and landed on the Canadian coast and settled near London, Canada. Finley and Duncan began farming and raising wheat as a staple crop, and built a life together in Canada. However, Duncan was restless in Canada. In 1858, when Duncan was grown, he left his father's farm and moved to the United States to become a logger, with the hope of saving up enough money to explore the United States. Ultimately, it was not wood that gave Duncan opportunity. It was war. In 1862, at the age of 25, Duncan enlisted in the Union Army in the Civil War. Duncan later used his wartime salary and discharge bonus to seek his own land. Duncan knew that he wanted to find a place filled with meadows and good land to raise his family, much like his family farm in Scotland. He, along with his childhood sweetheart turned wife, Catherine Mockengubbery, kept traveling west until he found a place that reminded him of the Scottish Highlands, southwestern Minnesota. The pair settled in Jackson County, Minnesota, where Duncan would become a teacher, and he and Catherine would raise 12 children together. His oldest son, Dan, was my great-great-great-grandfather. Now, I can't help but marvel that Duncan underwent this incredible journey only to return to a place that sang the Song of Scotland, as my grandfather says. Ultimately, though, Duncan's journey is only a reminder that home is not just a piece of land. It is a feeling, like the feeling when a bagpipe swells and my grandfather smiles.